Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of my Bluetooth in Action series. Today, we're going to look into more advanced debugging by using the serial port to view data. Up until now, we haven't really needed to visualize data. We've been blinking LEDs, we've been turning on and off GPIOs, and mainly using visual references. For the next part of this series, we'll be looking into more advanced features, and ones that will require some level of data output. This is also a question I get frequently, so today, we're going to be looking at serial output. The BGM111 module is connected to a computer using a CMSYS device, one that allows us to flash the device, but also to use it as a serial port simultaneously. It isn't quite as easy to use as C, but with a few helper procedures, we can print a lot of data. The command that we are going to be using is endpoint underscore send, which is in the API reference in the endpoint section. Note that the API already talks about the endpoint, UART1, UART0, or drop. We'll be using UART1, since that is what is connected to the CMSYS module, and to make things easier, we will go ahead and create a const called uart underscore ep for endpoint and give it the value 2 for uart1. It'll make things easier later on. Back to the documentation. The function we're interested in is an endpoint command called endpoint send. It takes three parameters. The endpoint is the uart port, data len is the length of the data to send, and data data is the buffer to send. So let's say we want to send a hello world to our computer. So we copy and paste the system boot event from a file I prepared earlier, and we add the endpoint send command. The first parameter is the UART port, which we will call UART underscore EP. The second parameter is the length. We'll get back to that. The third is the buffer, hello world. Of 13. Let's add that number to the length parameter. OK, we should be good. In order to see the text, we need a serial console. There are a lot to choose from. I'm using TerraTerm because I'm used to it, but others exist. They all share the same principle. Select a COM port, set up the connection parameters, and wait for data. I'll be using 115200 board, 8 bits of data, no parity, and 1 stop bit. Shortened to 115200 8N1. I'll show you why in just a second. So let's compile that and flash it. And nothing happens. Why? Here's the catch. We are using the right command, but remember that unless we set up the hardware, nothing is actually configured, so the UR point hasn't actually been set up. It is up to us to correctly configure the IO pins. We will need two things to get us up and running. We will need to configure the serial port. By default, these devices are already in 8N1. We'll just specify the board rate for easy viewing. This is done in the hardware file. The documentation file at Silicon Labs is UG119. All documentation files are available on the Silicon Labs website or directly by installing Simplicity Studio. Version 4 has just come out. So, in UG119, section 3.4 UART. This shows us what parameters are needed. Index, board rate, and flow control make sense, only BGAPI needs explaining. When an external host is used to control the Bluetooth module over UART, the BGAPI zero protocol must be enabled. Well, we don't need that, so we'll leave it at false. Secondly, and this is sometimes the tricky part, the two GPIO pins need to be set correctly. A5 is used for TX, A3 is used for RX. Let's try to compile that again and see what happens. This time, things change. We can see some serial output. If you get any corrupted text or no text at all, make sure that you're using the right settings as very few devices are able to automatically detect the board rate. This is a great way of printing text, but there are times when you'll need to print something else. Decimal, hexadecimal, or even binary are frequently used types. There is no direct way of printing out this kind of data, but with some simple helper procedures, you can print out just about anything. I didn't create these procedures, they were actually already available in some example programs, just hidden away. So for example, for debugging purposes, it is always interesting to know what hardware build we are using. To do this, we use an endpoint send to print out some text, and then call the print int32 procedure before calling endpoint send again using a carriage return sequence. The result is as you would expect. So that's it for serial output. I hope this helps you in your projects. We'll be using this as we continue with more advanced projects, and I already have an idea of what I want to do next. And we'll start off by scanning for other Bluetooth devices. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye!